Welcome everyone again to the fourth in the series of the CAM APS FX webinars. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please make sure your cameras are off and you are on mute for the duration of the presentation. Please ask your questions via chat and we will field them at the end of the presentation. The presentation is being recorded and it will be available on the training platform for you to watch later on. So let's get going. So this is uh, the fourth. We've got one more webinar this year um, and then we've got more coming in the new year. So do look out for those, please. I'd like to just uh, run through who the presenters are today. Um, we have Charlotte and Sarah presenting with us. Um, Roman isn't with us today, but he's the brains behind the CAM APS system. So we always like to uh, mention him and I will be just facilitating the webinar today. So I'm gonna hand directly over to Charlotte. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks, Candice. So in terms of the um, aims and objectives of uh, today's uh, webinar, it's really to sort of empower uh, teachers to be able to support children who are using uh, the closed loop system. So we have um, good evidence from research studies that actually using a closed loop system can really improve glucose control and reduce low blood glucose levels, so hypoglycemia. Um, and really children are spending a large proportion of their day uh, in school, so to be able to support them to use these systems um, throughout the school day, I think is both uh, important for the children themselves and also the parents as well. So some of the things that we want to uh, take you through today are um, understanding what a closed loop system is and what it's uh, supposed to do and how it works, what the components of the CAM APS FX closed system are, closed loop system are, how to bolus or give insulin um, with the CAM APS FX app for meals, how to use um, or when to recognize when certain functions of the system uh, can be utilized. So ease off and boost, and we'll come into what those do and why they might be used. Um, the importance of alarms and alerts when using a closed loop system and how to respond to these in terms of managing high blood glucose levels and low blood glucose levels and how this might differ or be the same as with your usual um, type 1 diabetes management. So to begin with uh, some terminology, so closed loop systems are also called um, the artificial pancreas or automated insulin delivery systems. And they're all sort of the same thing, but the different names are used um, interchangeably. And so what you can see here is a closed loop system um, worn on the body. So you have a sensor, which is reading real time glucose levels from the child. Uh, and that tends to be worn on the tummy or sometimes on the back of the arm. Uh, you also have an insulin pump um, which you can see there in the blue box. And again, this tends to be worn. There's a small uh, little bit of tubing that sticks um, into the skin, um, giving the insulin just below the skin. Um, and then there's, there's a control algorithm. And this is sort of the brains behind the system. And so the way it works is the control algorithm gets told what the glucose level is in real time. And it calculates how much insulin needs to be given to keep the glucose levels within the target range, which tends to be from four to 10 uh, millimoles per liter. And that's happening all the time. So that's why it's called a closed loop system. So as the glucose levels go down, it tells the control algorithm, which says to the insulin pump, less insulin is required. As the glucose levels go up, the control algorithm will tell the insulin pump to give more insulin. So the specific components of the CAM APS FX closed loop system, you can see here in the figure. So the glucose sensor that we use is called a Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor or CGM. And you can see it there. It's about uh, an inch and a half or three or four centimeters long. And it's worn flat against the skin, as I say, normally on the tummy or the upper arm. And then the Dana RS insulin pump, you can see there, which will have a piece of plastic tubing coming out, which connects to the, to the child's body. Um, and then the, the control algorithm is, is found as an app on, on a mobile phone. So it's a standard Android smartphone. 
uh, which hosts the app and the icon of it, you can see in the bottom left of this screen, the green bubble, and that takes you into the CAM APS FX app. The devices communicate uh, via Bluetooth. So it does mean that if the child um, who will be wearing the insulin pump and the sensor goes out of a, a classroom, they need to have the phone within six to 10 meters of them because it's communicating via Bluetooth. Um, and that's quite important. Often the children will have it in a backpack or, or similar, but that needs to not be separated from them for the system to work. The data um, that's collected on the phone is also sent in real time to, to the cloud, and it's, it's a diabetes sort of data management platform. It's called Diasend. And one of the uses that people have found when they're using the system in school is that some of the teachers or support staff can have the Diasend app uh, somewhere separate, perhaps at the front of the classroom or elsewhere, and they can see what's happening uh, with the child's glucose and insulin delivery. So you get real-time uploads of this diatom cloud, and there's also the option for real-time text message alerts, which uh, many parents, particularly of the younger children, will have set up. So if their glucose goes high or low or there's a problem, often a text message alert will be sent to the parent. Um, and this can also be set up for teachers as well if required. So in terms of how the system works, I've mentioned that the insulin is delivered by the insulin pump. For those of you that are familiar with sort of standard insulin pumps, what tends to happen is there's a constant basal rate and then there's boluses given for meals. What the closed loop system does is it set, sets the pump's own basal rates to zero and then calculates new rates every 10 to 12 minutes. And that allows it to respond to the glucose levels and be very flexible. And you can see this sort of happening on the, on the graph on the right hand side. So the dot, uh, open or closed dots are the continuous glucose monitoring levels, so you'll sense the glucose levels. And then in the light blue line, you can see the insulin delivery. So this is going up and down. It looks a bit like a New York skyline uh, in response to what's happening to the glucose. What this does mean is that on the pump screen itself, it'll read no delivery. And you can see a picture of that there can be a bit concerning when you look at it the first time, but what's really important is that just means that the closed loop is working. If there's a reason that insulin, there is a problem with insulin delivery, then the pump will be bleeping or vibrating constantly to, to alert you to the fact or alert the child to the fact that uh, there's a problem with insulin delivery. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and of course, we, we teach parents and children themselves about this as well. So, so they should recognize it, but just so it's not disconcerting, if you look at the pump, it will show no delivery, but that's absolutely fine. What you can see above it is the bolus that's being given by, by the pump. Because it's a hybrid closed loop system, it's not completely closed loop, we still have to give boluses for meals. So it will manage all glucose levels between meals and overnight, but for meals, we still have to give insulin for the carbohydrates consumed. So if you were to look at the closed loop data on diacen, so this can, some people have, uh, have heard that uh, teachers have a tablet, which can be at the front of the classroom just to keep an eye on things. What you can see here in the green shaded area is the target glucose range, so 3.9 to 10. In the green uh, line within that is the actual glucose levels. And this can be, this is sort of reported in real time. Below that with the green triangles are the carbohydrates that have been consumed and it's in grams. And then the whole bottom panel is looking at the insulin delivery. So you can see here, this is being adjusted every sort of 10 minutes or so by the system in response to what's happening with the glucose levels. So you can see at, at eight o'clock, uh, just before that, a carbohydrate has been taken off. The shaded blue area at the bottom is the insulin bolus that's given to match the carbohydrate. And then you can see behind that insulin delivery, which is going up and down in response to the glucose levels. So this is a really handy way of being able to see exactly what's going on with the child. You can see the glucose levels and you can see that the insulin is being delivered and how, how much insulin is being given. So when um, you enter the um, app, the CAM APS FX app, and just to bear in mind that 
For the app to work, it, the phone needs to have a PIN code. Um, so that's quite important that, that you have access to that PIN code if you're going to be expected to keep an eye on the glucose or potentially bolus. Um, so it, it's a security measure to make sure that it can't be unlocked erroneously. So this will be the home screen that you land on when you open the app. And what you can see here, the biggest thing and the most important thing is the glucose level, which you can see there. And you also get an arrow showing the trend. So you can see that here it's 8.8 .8, and the trend suggests that it's the glucose levels are remaining flat. It has different arrows depending on, and you can see on the right here, if you have a double arrow going up, the glucose is steeply rising. And if there's a double arrow going down, it's steeply falling. And there's also arrows in between where it's gradually rising or falling. So you can get a good idea of, of where the glucose is from just opening the app straight away. What you'll notice in the background is that the screen behind is green or a turquoise green. That tells you that closed loop is in operation, it's working. And we sometimes call this auto mode. And you'll see at the bottom here, auto mode is on. What you can see on the screen grab on the right here is that the background is actually orange. And that's because closed loop or auto mode isn't working at this point. And that could be for a, for a number of different reasons. If you tap on the little eye at the top, it might tell you why that is. Normally it's because the, the phone might have been too far away from the child. And so the Bluetooth has been interrupted. As soon as the phone gets sort of within, a, within six meter distance of the child, it will reconnect and go back into the green screen. So you don't need to do anything with this. It's just so that you're aware when closed loop is working and when it's not. Other things of interest on the home screen, which we'll take you through individually, is the knife and fork at the top, which is where your bolus from, which is where Sarah um, is going to talk you through how to do that shortly. You can see the glucose trend and you can see these two functions that we have called boost and ease off. And we'll go through what those mean uh, and when they might be used. OK, so I'm now going to pass you over to Sarah. Thanks, Charlotte. So what we thought we'd do, um, so it's super clear, is um, show you some videos that show various things that Charlotte's just talked about, like switching on auto mode, how to bolus on the uh, phone, and also um, how to set ease off and boost and, and when those might be useful. So first of all, switching on auto mode. So the most of the time, hopefully, auto mode will just be uh, will just be on and the screen will be green. But what you can see here is when you switch auto mode on, the system asks for you to confirm anything it asks about optimizing battery storage or usage always allow. And then what happens is the system pulls all the data off the pump to make sure it knows everything that's going on in terms of insulin delivery and the screen goes green. And that's when auto mode is running. And that's when you would see that the system, the, the pump is flashing no delivery. Like Charlotte said, it's not, it's, de it's delivering in closed loop. It's just switched off that phase of insulin delivery. So probably the main thing that you'll be doing or supporting a child to do is to give a meal bolus using the CAMAKS FX system. And so um, on the home screen at the top in the middle, there's a little knife and fork icon. And when you touch the knife and fork icon, it takes you in, it links to the pump and it takes you into this screen that you can see on the left hand side. And what you can see on that screen is a few things. So um, in the middle there, you can see the current glucose level and that is pulled directly from the glucose um, from, the, from the sensor, it's already there. And you've got three different ways that you can actually deliver a bolus. Um, so I'll talk you through them and then show you the video. So the first thing is there's four little knife and fork icons there, and these can be preset um, to certain meal sizes, certain carbohydrate amounts. And what we know is um, some parents have agreed with um, the, the carer at school that, um, you know, one of the icons, like the, the second one in, the second, the second largest one, if that's the one they need to touch and they pre-programmed in the amount of carbohydrate that is in the child's packed lunch, for example. So they, those icons can be pre-programmed and some parents have used that um, as a way of, of making it really easy for the school staff to, to help the child give the right amount of, uh, put the right amount of carbohydrate in the system for the bolus. There's also, um, you'll see below the smallest knife and fork, there's a little um, uh, sort of teal colored dot. And 
you can slide that along that line to, to change the amount of carbohydrates that comes up in the, in the section that says carbs in grams. And you can also actually just touch where it says carbs and you've got those three dotted lines. You can just touch there and it brings up um, a keypad and you can actually just type in, as you can see on the right hand side, someone's typed in 60 grams of carbohydrate. And then what we, you would do is then press confirm and then you would deliver the bolus. And I'll show you that in a second. Ideally, boluses should be done about 10 to 15 minutes before eating. And that will all be part of the, the care plan that you'll have for that particular child. Um, the insulin to carb ratio that the child needs for each particular meal is read directly off the pump. So you don't need to worry about any of those sorts of things. You just need to enter the amount of carbohydrate into the bolus calculator. And I'll show you now what that looks like in um, video form here. So what happens is um, you would press the knife and fork icon in the middle of the home screen and the phone connects to the pump. And then you can choose how you want to enter the amount of carbohydrate. So by pressing the knives and forks, they can be preset to different amounts of carbohydrate. You can move that little button along to get a certain amount of carbohydrate, or you can touch the carbohydrate box and you can type in the grams of carbohydrate depending on what you need to put in. And, and the amounts will be kind of directed um, from either from the parent or you'll know um, from the, the school meal uh, how much carbohydrate is there that will be communicated with you. And then you would just press confirm and deliver. And then the, the system counts down and it delivers the bolus and then it tells you that the bolus has been delivered. And that's literally as simple as that. So moving on to a couple of um, the, the other really useful functions that make this system really um, user friendly uh, and, and helpful for, for managing glucose control is the ease off um, button is the first one. So ease off makes the system less aggressive. It reduces the insulin delivery and it, it raises the, the target that's being aimed for temporarily so that the system just backs off a little bit. And it can be really useful in at certain periods. The most thing it will be useful for is um, before, during and after exercise and activity. And it's equivalent if you've looked after children on pumps without a closed loop system, it's equivalent to setting a reduced temporary basal rate. Um, what, what you would normally do is press the little button that says ease off at the bottom right, and then it will ask you, a box will pop up asking you to set off set up the ease off duration. And you'll have, this will be part of the care plan. For example, if there's a PE lesson that's happening at 1 p.m., we might suggest that ease off is set to run about an hour and a half before the activity is due to start. So you'll set the time based on um, you know, the, the hour and a half before the duration of the PE lesson. And usually people will want to um, set, um, for, set it, keep it running for a, a period of time, another hour after, because the effects of exercise can continue to affect glucose levels for a period of time after. Again, for each individual child, the, the timings will be part of their care plan. What's fantastic about ease off, and again, is really useful for children who have planned exercise within school in terms of PE lessons and things, is that you can pre-program ease off. So it might well be that a parent has pre-programmed an ease off to come on at the right time, ready for, say, that PE lesson at one o'clock. Um, and so when it comes up, you can choose if you're setting one, you can choose to just run it from now. Or you can choose to set it later. And so at breakfast time, for example, you could pre-program that to come on later in the day. And when an ease off is running, you can see on that screen grab on the right, you can see there's a blue band at the bottom of, of the um, graph box there. And you can see that it says ease off. It's got a countdown with how long ease off has got left to run. And if there was a particular reason that you wanted to turn ease off off, then you just touch that little cross on the right hand side. And I can, I can show you that in video form in a second. One thing that Ease Off won't do is it can't undo an inaccurate um, manual bolus or a meal bolus. So if, um, if the carb counting wasn't right at lunchtime, for example, and the glucose is dropping because of a, a, a level, a, a, an amount of carbs has gone in that was too much, Putting ease off won't, it can't suck the insulin back out, it won't change that, you'd still need to, if, you, if someone was heading low, you'd still need to get in with hypo treatment, which we'll cover in a minute. Um, but it's really useful, mostly in the situation for activity. So in terms of the video for this, let me show you. So what you can see 
is by touching the ease off button at the bottom right, it tells you a little bit about what ease off does and when it might be useful and it asks you how long you want to run it for. So putting two hours in in this situation and pressing next. And then it asks you, do you want it now or later? And if you choose later, what it does is it allows you to preset the time that you want it to come on later. And then what you can see in the bottom there was that it said panned ease off. There was an ease off that was set with a little clock by it saying that it was planned to come on. And then that would automatically come on at the time that's been set that's relative to the period of exercise, for example. Conversely to ease off, the system also has a boost function and boost does the opposite. It makes the algorithm slightly more aggressive and it can increase insulin delivery. Um, what's great about uh, boost in comparison, if you're familiar with increased temporary basals or normal pump therapy, is that boost is a kind of super safe um, system to use because what it does is if the person was above target and needing their the additional insulin you might pop boost on but when the glucose drifts down to target or drops slightly below even though boost might still be running for another hour hour and a half depending on how much time that you put it on for the system won't continue to be um, extra aggressive it will back off until it, until a point where the glucose may be starts rising again above target and then it would kick in again. So it's a really safe option. Normally you're probably not gonna be deciding to put boost on um, yourself unless it's part of a care, part of the care plan. But often what tends to happen is if a parent notices that there's an issue with the glucose or you notice there's an issue with the glucose, you probably would in conjunction with the parent decide that boost needs to go on and they would suggest how long it needed to go on for and you would pop it on. So it can be useful if blood sugars have shot up after a meal, for example, or if, if there's kind of low levels of illness, kind of a bit of a cough and a cold and blood sugars are running a little bit higher, for example, that can be really useful. And it's the same thing with boost. You can preset it to come on later, but mostly it would be the sort of thing that you there would be an issue and you would put it on um, at the time it was needed. Um, and again, you can see in that screen grab on the right there, at the bottom in blue, there's a planned boost on someone's preset that boost and you can see it. And if any, if you want to get rid of those, you literally press the little cross at the bottom right. And again, I'll show you how that looks in video form. Just wait for it to load. Okay, so you'll see you get the home screen will come up there and um, you can see the boost button on the left hand side at the bottom there, you touch that, it tells you a bit about why boost might be useful. You enter the duration that you want boost to run for. And like I say, it's not such a big deal because if it won't boost if it's not needed. And then you can say you want it on now or later. This example was set for now and it's running straight away. You can see it's set for two hours, it's running straight away and it's ticking down. If you wanted to cancel it, you just press the cross and you'd cancel it and it would disappear. So another couple of things that are useful to know about is on the home screen at the top left, there's three little lines and this takes you to an additional drop down menu. And there's lots of things you'll see on the drop down menu that you don't really need to worry about too much. But the things that's good to know is that the, um, the very top two are the alert menu and the shares menu. So the alert menu um, has essentially the, the sensor app is embedded within this uh, closed loop app. So that means all the usual alerts and alarms that someone can receive from a, CD close, uh, a continuous glucose monitoring system can um, come up, uh, can, can be set within the app. So most children will have alerts and alarms preset by the parents at different levels um, relative to kind of what, what they require. And um, there'll be, again, part of the care plan will be um, you'll have uh, information about if a certain alert, a high or a low alert comes on, what action needs to be taken. If the glucose levels um, reach this um, predetermined low or high level, what will happen is an alarm will sound on the child's phone. And also the system has the ability to link, you can have sharers and followers. So um, a parent can put in their mobile phone number into the app. So what that would mean that if there is a SIM in the, in the child's phone, and most children using the system would have a SIM in the phone, that any alert that comes up on the child's phone will also 
he sent immediately as a text to the parents phone to alert them to kind of maybe check in have a look if there's a problem with either a low glucose level or a high glucose level one of the really useful things about that follow um, option with the, the text messages and again we've got some um, uh, schools that are using this is that a, a, a mobile phone number for a school phone um, or a teacher's phone if that's what they want to do can be entered and in in the in the list you can enter five different ones and you can switch those on and off so um, in some schools we've got a situation where the staff are there's a school phone number that's in there and in the morning when the child goes into school they switch um, switch it on so that the teacher or staff can follow during the day and then if there are alerts and alarms they'll get them um, and then obviously they will turn it off when the, the child goes home at the end of the day. You don't want to be getting any alerts and alarms when the child's not in school um, with you. So that's been a really useful function that people have found really helpful, as well as that diacend follow option. OK, I'm going to hand you back to Charlotte to talk you through hypoglycemia management. Thanks, Sarah. So um, some of this has sort of been touched on previously. What's important is, yes, this is a closed loop system um, that helps improve uh, time in, in glucose, uh, target glucose range and reduce hypoglycemia, but you can still have high and low glucose with the system. So in terms of hypoglycemia management in a child who's using the closed loop system, you would treat exactly um, as per the care plan. There's no need to alter any settings on the app. So for instance, the alarm goes off uh, and somebody, uh, you, you treat the hypo uh, as, as per the care plan. You don't need to do anything on the app. One thing that you might be asked to do, uh, particularly uh, by parents if they want to see when hypo treatment's been given is you can document this within the app. And it just means that if the child's had three or four hypo treatments in a day, it will just allow the parents to realize this when they look at the app. So the way that you would do this is in the drop down menu that Sarah took you to earlier, towards the bottom, there's an option called add meal. If you select this, it will bring up the middle screen grab and you would just type in the number of grams of carbohydrate used to treat the hypo. So often sort of 10 to 15, 20 grams. You type that in there and underneath is a little box that says hypoglycemia treatment and you just select this, press continue and confirm. And as I say, it can be really helpful for parents who might be reviewing what's happened in the school day uh, when the child gets home that they can see actually two or three hypo treatments and it helps them to be able to adjust things slightly to prevent that happening again. In terms of hyperglycemia, so high glucose management, so Generally, we say allow the closed loop system to manage the high glucose levels. This is slightly what it's set up to do, and it will just give more insulin to respond to it. And um, you can, again, usually in, in coordination with the, with the uh, child's parents, you can give additional insulin or correction insulin. And this is given via the same bolus calculator that Sarah took you through earlier when you're giving insulin for carbohydrates. But instead of putting any carbohydrates in, you just use the glucose value and it will suggest insulin to be given as a corrective insulin dose. And the majority of times you don't need to do that and you just rely on the system to bring the glucose back into range. One thing that um, you should just be mindful of as with any child who's using pump therapy is when to consider whether it's a problem with the pump connecting to the child so the insulin isn't getting in. And what you can see here on, this, on the um, graph on the right is the glucose levels at the top there in the yellow line have remained really high um, for quite a while. And that's despite the closed loop system giving lots of insulin, which you can see at the bottom. So this lack of a response to, to lots of insulin being given suggests that perhaps the insulin isn't actually getting into the, to the child. Um, and it should just prompt somebody to think, OK, should we just check that the pump is connected properly? Um, and if there's any issues with that, then it's, it would usually be a, an older child or the parents coming in who would rectify that, that set problem. So it's just worth bearing in mind if it's been really high, obviously continue with the care plan in terms of whether to check ketones and things, but just consider whether there might be a problem with the insulin getting in, as you would do with standard insulin pump therapy. So. In terms of 
the the benefits that, uh, that parents see with having uh, the school on board with with children using the closed loop system. So I think it provides real reassurance. This is definitely the way that diabetes management is going in the future. And so I think it's really important that uh, us as sort of healthcare professionals, support staff in schools can support these children um, to be independent as much as possible in school. And you can see here, and I'll just leave this on the screen for a moment, that the impact that sort of these systems are having on children and parents um, and really sort of anything that we can do to support this, I think is really important. Um, particularly there's been people noticing improvements with development, walking and talking in very young children, improved concentration. And um, so I think, yeah, just highlights the importance of, uh, of, of working with these children and parents to support the children in school. So hopefully over the past sort of 20, 30 minutes, we've covered um, what a closed loop system is and how it works, what the components of the CAM APS FX system are, so the sensor, the pump and the, and the app, which has the, the algorithm, how to bolus um, or support a child to bolus uh, using the app, what ease off and boost do uh, and when those might be used or you might be asked to put them on. Uh, what potential alerts and alarms might be, might sort of occur during the school day and how to respond to these and how to manage high and low glucose levels during the school day. I'll hand you back to uh, Candice now for any questions that there might be. Thank you very much. Um, I think that was a very, very clear um, presentation. So thank you, Sarah and Charlotte for that. You've stumped everyone because there are no questions at the moment, but I was actually just thinking as you were talking, um, when you've done teacher training in, in schools, sort of what's the main fear that you're finding and, and kind of how, how has that changed when you speak to them maybe, you know, a little bit later? What I've done a few training sessions with um, with schools now, and I think initially there's a fear that it's quite complex, um, and um, I think that's pretty quickly dispelled. There are lots of functions and things on the app. So there's lots of things in the drop down menu that we didn't go through, but actually it's because you don't need to know about them. We've this, the whole point of this session was is kind of the things. There's the, a few things that are key and that you need to know. The rest of it uh, you don't need to be worrying about. Um, there's, there's been some sort of worries about hypos and how aggressive the system is. But ha as Charlotte said, the main aim of a closed loop system is to prevent hypoglycemia, to prevent those low glucose levels whilst keeping the glucose in target as much as possible. And that's certainly what we see with this system in all the, there's been numerous um, high quality research studies done prior to the commercialization of, of this, as you, as you might imagine. And what they show um, is that as well as being really effective way of, of managing glucose control, it's also extremely safe, you know, otherwise it wouldn't be allowed. So I think that's, that's really important to recognize that as well. And the other thing is, what you'll see, and, and Candice um, uh, can talk more about it, is there's a there's a specific, as well as the webinar that will be on the site, there's a specific training module for um, for schools um, that you can complete and answer the questions and, and pass the module and get a certificate from it. And actually, what a lot of schools who have come to us and said, can we have some training? We, we've said in the first instance, you want to try doing the training module and come back to us if there's anything else, you know, that you have any other questions, you want anything else answered. And um, actually the training module for, for the majority has, has just been exactly what they needed and they felt from that um, in conjunction with the care plan that they have obviously gone through with the, the child's parents, they get, kind of gives them everything they need because it's at the end of the day fairly simple. There's been some issues about worrying about keeping the phone um, near to the child. Um, they end up getting pretty good actually about, about just um, keeping it with them. A lot will have it um, with them in some kind of sort of um, sort of like for a belt, um, some that it's like around the around the middle. Some will have um, we've got a, a, quite a small girl who has a, like a little lady girl rucksack she keeps with it, and the minute she kind of gets up and moves elsewhere, she the first thing she does is pick up her rucksack. So the kids get used to kind of carrying the stuff with them, and um, they know it benefits them. You know, otherwise without they'd have been getting alerts and alarms to say that they're disconnected and things. So they they actually manage it really well. Um, so yeah, there's not been not been too many issues really generally. Great, no, thank you. Is a question come through about if a child is having lots of hypos, 
not connected to carb ratios, but other times of the day. Um, it's obviously good if the system can learn. So, so does does the repeated hyper treatments affect the algorithm learning, or how does the system cope with that? Wow, that's a, a brilliant question. So, yeah, absolutely right. The um, the closed loop algorithm is a, is adaptive and it continues to learn and adjust. For some reason, in some days, uh, people might be more insulin sensitive, or it may be that they had a period where they were a bit more insulin resistant and then suddenly became more insulin sensitive. Often it tends to happen when the weather changes. So the first sort of hot day, suddenly lots of children will end up having more hypos than they're used to. It will adjust to it, but in the short term, uh, if you're worried about it, the easiest thing to do in terms of how to manage throughout the school day is probably to pop on and ease off uh, throughout the period of the school day just to really minimise the hypos because obviously they're hugely disruptive for the child um, and their learning. So I think in the short term, putting on ease off is probably the solution to that. Um, in the long term, yes, it, the, the system will learn, but I think in terms of the school day and things, that's probably the, the quickest win. Um, particularly where it's been a sudden change. And I think, yeah, typically, I don't know if Sarah's got any other uh, examples, but I often think the sort of early days of summer when it's hot weather, children tend to be a bit more sensitive to the incident. So you can sometimes have more hypos then. So one, one of the things that's really useful with the alerts and alarms is that quite often the low alert will be set at a level that's kind of just a bit pre-hypo, if you like. So we don't want to wait till a hypo has happened. The system will have been trying to deal with it in the background. It will have backed off insulin delivery, quite possibly to nothing, but, you know, a, a decent period of time before. But if that wasn't enough alone to stop the glucose level dropping below that kind of low alert level. So, for example, the low alert might be set at like, I don't know, 4.5, um, for example, and, and as part of the care plan, it might be if that low alert goes off at 4.5, um, you look at the directional arrows that Charlotte mentioned, There's you can see if they're staying flat or um, going like down on, the, on a slant or going straight down. And you'll have a you'll have a plan within that care plan of what to do about that. So, for example, if they're if it's four point five and straight, actually you might leave it. That might be fine. If it's four point five and you've got two down arrows, actually they'll probably be in your care plan to to get in with some carbohydrate, maybe you know five ten grams of carbohydrate to stop it going into hypo territory. So you know we're all about preventing the hypos ideally rather than treating them um, as much as possible. And Sarah, is hyper treatment exactly the same um, sort of on the closed loop as it would be for any in insulin injections or pump therapy? Generally, you tend to need slightly less hypo treatment on a closed loop system because, like I said, if the glucose has been dropping towards that low level, the system will have backed off potentially to nothing and have not been giving any insulin, you know, even up to the hour before you hit that point. So because there's not been a, a, a large amount of insulin around, then in order to, to just help the glucose level kind of skim that low level and, and come back up into a, a slightly more um, optimum range, you might just need, you know, four or eight grams of carbohydrate, like one jelly baby or two jelly babies, for example. Um, and so, again, that will be part of the care plan, what you would do and look at, at the arrows, the, the glucose level and the arrows, and depending on what the arrows are doing, there'll be. So it might be historically on pump therapy, it'd been a standard 15 grams of carbohydrate if there was a low. Um, but with this, it might be actually just need a little bit to just help help the glucose back up into a normal level. And actually, if you did go in with 15 grams of carbohydrate, that might be way too much and you'd end up with this then high following, which we obviously want to avoid as well. It's the fast acting carbohydrates you're talking about. Yeah, the rapid acting carbohydrates. So some people will have like um, hypo, uh, like hypo stop or glucojuice or um, like lift, it's called now, little bottles of, of the, the sort of sugary, uh, drinks or it might be that they have a certain amount of a carton of juice or it might be they have you know uh, a jelly baby or two whatever but it's, it's sugary stuff that will work really quickly is what we want when glucose is on the low side. And uh, would you recommend that, that support staff or teachers put in the the hyper treatment each time into the app or um, to does this help the algorithm learn or is this just something that is a documentation that needs to be discussed with the, the parents uh, as part of the care plan? Yeah, the, the algorithm's learning all the time anyway. And certainly if the glucose level hits below the low target, the algorithm will learn from that. 
Where it can be helpful entering those, as Charlotte showed you on the drop, drop down menu and you put add meal and enter the amount of carbohydrate in there with and then ticking the hypo box, that can be useful because if you've used hypo treatment, especially to stop reaching the low level, it's handy that you're, you, the system doesn't know, it just probably thinks it's done a marvellous job of, of helping it skim and, and not go low. So yeah, if you can enter that, it does help the system learn that there's had to be uncovered carbs gone in there to, to deal with that glucose level and then it will learn I take it into account of uh, when it's when it's deciding kind of what it needs to to do going forward and looking for patterns uh, and things in the long run so it can be helpful yeah if it if you forget or you know and at you know a period of time's gone past it's only really relevant at the time so if it wasn't you know convenient to do it at the time it's not the end of the world um it just can be an, an extra useful thing to do great another question is there funding available for teachers aides or school nurses to sort of monitor the phone that that receives the alerts and then assist the child when the alert goes off i think i'm right in saying that there are that there are depending on the age of the child especially in primary school age children there are systems in place that the school can help you apply for where you can get funding for uh, a member of support staff. So I know some of the children that we look after here in Cambridge will have a dedicated member of support staff for um, for one particular child that kind of stays in the classroom and is there to help them the whole time and then usually mucks in with other stuff that needs to be done around that. We've got another school, for example, that's got three children um, with uh, type one diabetes uh, in the same uh, school. And so they have a member of staff that um, acts as a, a support staff for the three children. And um, uh, that one of the members of staff, they actually based in the office, but they have um, the ones that are on the system, they have the alerts go through to, to a phone in the office so that they can keep an eye on it remotely that way. That's what's so great about this is the remote following is really useful in that situation. So there's definitely ways to get funding depending on um, sort of the, the level of, of control that's required and whether there's been kind of some children, it's just much more difficult to manage than others. And that's definitely something that it's worth talking to your head, the head teacher of the school about and how you would go about accessing that funding and they'll be able to help you with that. Excellent. Thanks, Sarah. Can you just flick back one slide for me? Um, we don't have any other questions coming up. So just giving somebody a last moment if they if they have a question. So Sarah mentioned that there is online training for schools. So if you scan that QR code there, or you um, go to that website address, you will be able to find the online training that uh, we offer to healthcare professionals, to people living with diabetes, diabetes, type 1 diabetes in their families as well as teachers. All you have to do as a teacher is just register, uh, click the I'm a teacher button and it will offer you the training suitable for uh, sort of what you need to be able to support that child. It's completely free so please do go ahead and register um, and undertake the training and, and let us know what you think. Right, I don't think we have any more questions coming through. So thank you very much uh, to Sarah and Charlotte for presenting today and for everyone attending the session. And don't forget to book in for our next session on the 2nd of December. Thank you very much and good night to everyone.